Hi everyone. Um, watch it. Let me start sharing. <laughs> um, share desktop. Not that one. Okay, cool. All right. Hi everyone. Um, this is another meeting of the R for Data Science Book Club, and today we'll be going over chapter twenty-five, which is functions. So our learning objectives for today are to learn about three useful types of functions. So those are vector functions, data frame functions, and plot functions. So vector functions take one or more vectors as input and return a vector as output. Data frame functions take a data frame as input and return a data frame as output. And plot functions take a data frame as input and return a plot as output. Okay, so functions are handy because they automate repetitive tasks. They have a name that makes the purpose very clear. Um, you only need to update your code in one place as things change, and it's safer than copy and paste, so you won't accidentally replicate errors. And the common theme for functions is to be consistent. So when and how to write a function. So if you found yourself copy and pasting code more than twice, um, consider writing a function. And the key steps in creating a function are one, pick a name that makes it clear what the function does. Um, two, your arguments or input variables that go inside the function, like so function, like it's a function of the arguments. And then three, you have the code which goes inside the curly braces um, after a function. And then you wanna check your function for a few inputs to make sure it's working. So yeah, so the basic um, basic shape of it, I guess, you have your name of the function, the function itself, the input of the function, which is its arguments. And then within the curly brackets, you have a code. Okay, so first we're gonna look at a vector function. So here we're gonna make a data frame and it's gonna be a tibble and there's gonna be um, four vectors within it. So, and each of the vectors are creating um, random, a random normal distribution. Uh, we're gonna take um, five, um, what do you say? Five, create five observations from a random normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. And then, so we're gonna take that data frame and mutate it um, in such a way that we take the, like the first observation of that, or each observation of that vector minus the minimum of that vector and divide it by the max of the vector minus the minimum. And what this, it ends up looking like this, but you, well, looking at it briefly, you might not have noticed that there's an error in the code. So we have A, and it's A is equal to A minus the min of A, with removing the NAs, divided by the max of A, again, removing the NAs, minus the min of A. And then for B, we have B is equal to B minus min of B, um, divided by max of B minus min of A. And if you look at the other ones, it was supposed to be you'll notice that this one was C minus min C max C, you know what I mean? But this one has an A when it should have in fact been a B. So instead of, since we're writing the same code more than three times, instead we're gonna create a, function, a vector function out of it. And so here we have these, we have these kind of lined up so you can see where like where they vary. So it's A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Let me see. So you'll see that each line, each line, you the A's here, all of this has the B's and this one has the C and the D's. So we make it clear we replace the bit that varies or variables with this like black square or rectangle. And then you see that all of them, this is basically the formula that all of them use. So to turn this into a function, we'll need three things. We're gonna need a name, 
and we're going to call it rescale 0, 1 because the function rescales a vector to lie between 0 and 1. We need our arguments. Here we just have one argument that we'll call x because this is a convenient name for a numeric vector. And then we have the body, which is the code that will be repeated across all the calls. OK, so here's our rescale function here. And again, our name, the name is rescale. 0, 1, it's a function of x, where you're getting x minus min of x divided by max of x minus min of x. Um, so here, we're going to put in a vector of negative 10, 0, and 10 into our rescale function. And here's our output. We have 0, 0 0.5, and 1. And then we do it again. And here you see we put in an na. Um, and that's why that's why we have this that any remove in there so it knows how to handle that. Okay, so continuing this, um, we're gonna rewrite the call as a um, rewrite the call to use mutate. So we're gonna take our data frame and mutate such that a is equal to rescale zero of a. B is equal to rescale of B, C is equal to rescale of C. So basically, we're creating a data frame with the variables A, B, C, and D, or these end up being our columns. And it has that, um, it has like the output from the rescale of A, where A was our vector of five observations um, from the standard normal, standard normal um, distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. So here we have our um, our data frame with these um, these vectors. Uh, you'll notice this time B, and again, the point of the actual um, function is to rescale it. You'll see here B, all of the values are between zero and one. You don't know if you saw in the other one, but it actually, like B ended up having, like it had a one in it, or yeah, it had something greater than one in it basically, and should not have done that. Um, so yeah. Okay. So then this is just an example of another function. And here we wanna strip away the percent signs, commas and dollar sign from a string before converting it to a number. Okay, so we're gonna have the clean number function and it's gonna be a function of X and it's gonna, is percent is gonna detect X, a number, and if it has a percent sign in it. And then let's see. So then what else we wanna do? We wanna remove all of the percent signs. We wanna remove all of the commas and remove all of the dollar signs and then make it into a numeric. And then, so if it is a percent sign, if it does have a percent sign, we're gonna divide the number by 100. If not, we're just gonna leave it as the number. So then here, clean number, we're inputting $12,300. Um, and you see it has like, it has a dollar sign and it has a, a comma. And this is what it looks like when we remove it. And then here we have clean number. We're inputting 45% into the clean number function. So it removes the, not only does it remove the percent sign, but because it's a percent, it divides the 45 by 100. So it becomes a decimal 0 0.45. Okay, so next we're going to talk about data frame functions. And when you notice yourself copying and pasting multiple variables multiple times, then you might think about writing a data frame function. And data frame functions work like dplyr verbs. They take a data frame as the first argument. Um, some of the extra arguments that they also take some of the extra arguments that say what to do with it and then they return a data frame or a vector. Okay, so one of the things, 
one of the problems you'll run into with regards to a data frame function is when you start writing functions that use dplyr verbs and you'll hit the, this problem called indirection. So here we're going to create a function which we're calling root mean. So the arguments for our function are the data frame. Um, it's going to be the grouping variable and then the variable that you want the mean of. So it's group underscore variable and mean or group underscore var and mean underscore var. And then the body, the body of the function or the code, we take that data frame and then we pipe it to group by the grouping variable and then we pipe it to summarize and get the mean of the mean variable. So here are handy dandy, very familiar diamonds um, data frame. We're gonna, we wanna group by cut and get the mean of carrots. If you see, so group, yeah. So again, in the grouped, grouped mean, we're taking our data frame, which is diamonds, and then we're grouping by, um, grouping by the group variable, which is cut, and summarizing to get the mean of the mean variable, which is carrot. But you'll notice we run into an error in group by, um, because group by variables, um, we must group by variables found in dot data. So we need um, variables found in our data frame. And it's saying the column group underscore var is not found. So this is our problem of indirection. It's trying to group by, actually group by group underscore var, but that's not part of our actual data frame. So the problem of indirection explained. Um, so we're gonna make the problem a bit more clear and we can use made up data. So we're gonna have a data frame. It's gonna be a tibble. Um, um, these are going to be the variables we have. It's mean var1, group underscore var g, group is equal to 1, x is equal to 10, y is equal to 10. And then we're going to take our data frame and pipe it into that function we made previously, grouped underscore mean. And we're going to group by, we're grouping by group, um, which is 1, and then by x, and our x here is 10. But you'll notice when we're getting back our tibble, instead of it grouping, instead of it grouping by what um, the group variable, which should be the one, it's grouping by group var. But it is grouping by um, our x. Let's see. And yeah, you'll see it is grouping by mean of mean variable. And then, yeah. So then same thing here, where again, we're supposed to be grouping by, grouping by um, a group, um, or is our group one, but it's grouping by um, group underscore bear. And then, so regardless of how we call group underscore mean, it always does data frame, pipe in, group by group bar, um, piping summarize mean mean var instead of data frame group by the group and summarize mean of x or summarize mean of y. And this is a problem of indirection and it arises because dplyr uses tidy evaluation to allow you to refer to the names of variables inside your data frame without any special treatment. So yeah, so basically because we're already, so kind of what they're saying is the issue is because we're using dplyr verbs within our function, the dplyr verb is looking for, it's actually looking for that within our data frame. And it doesn't, those don't exist basically. So then, so then we come to tidy evaluation and embracing. So tidy evaluation makes our data analysis very concise as we never need to say which data frame a variable comes from, but the downside comes when we wanna wrap up repeated tidyverse code into a function. Our solution to overcome this problem is called embracing. 
And embracing a variable means to wrap it in braces so, so that var the variable becomes the variable inside two curly brackets. So here's an example. So group me. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we're going to rewrite that function before grouped underscore me. And again, it's going to be a, a function of our data frame, the grouping variable, and the variable that we want a mean of. So we're taking our data frame, piping it, and grouping by the group group underscore var. But this time, we're embracing it in the curly brackets. And then we're going to pipe that and summarize to get the mean of the mean variable, which again, we're embracing in curly brackets. So, and then here, we're going to try out our function grouped underscore mean. So we're going to call our data frame. We're going to pipe our data frame into the grouped mean function. And we're going to be grouping by group. And we're going to be summarizing and getting the mean of x. And here you see this time it works. Instead of saying group underscore var, we have um, group. So yay, curly, yay, embracing. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, so when to embrace. So the key challenge in writing data, data frame functions is figuring out which arguments need to be embraced. There are two terms to look for in like the documentation of um, of your dplyr um, functions, which correspond to the two most common subtypes of tidy evaluation. And that is data masking. And this is used in functions like arrange, filter, and summarize that compute with variables. And then you have tidy selection that is used for functions like select, relocate, and rename that select variables. Okay, so a common use case, we're going to create another function. Um, this function, summary six, is going to provide us with a six number summary. Um, the function arguments are the data and the variable. And then, so we, the code for it or the body of our function, you take the data and then you're going to do summarize. Within that, you want, you're going to get the min of the variable the mean of the variable, the median, the max, n or the number of variables. And then also it's going to tell you the number of missing, um, yeah, number of like missing um, observations. And then I have to look up what that is. Dot groups equal drop. Oh, that's just so it doesn't, Um, I want to say so it doesn't group. I forgot what that was doing. I think it has something to do with it grouping stuff. Oh, group by, yeah. So it didn't do the grouping, I guess, unless you ask it to. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so here we use our function summary six um, without any sort of grouping. Um, so summary six of caret, so we're getting the min, caret, mean, median, max, the number, and the number of missing. And then here, we can have the diamonds. We're doing the same thing, summary six of caret. But here, we're grouping by cut. OK, next, we have plot functions. And that, huh, I don't want both of these, but here they are. Okay. Give me one second. That shouldn't have done, oh. Sorry. That's, oh, I put the wrong thing. I thought it was you could have thought. Okay, so it should be showing you, because I put it in wrong, it should be showing you this code. Um, 
diamonds, we're taking the diamonds data frame and creating a GG plot um, where the aesthetics is carrot and then it's going to create a histogram. The first one would be is with bin width, um, bin width of 0 0.1 and the second one is with bin width 0 0.05. So those are these plots here. And then, yeah, it doesn't show you the code, <laughs> but yeah. So ideally you could take the code that was used to make these two functions, because basically the only thing that changes are our main, besides the data frame, the other thing that's changing is our bin width. That's one of the variables. Um, or yeah, that is one of the variables. So we can take the code and we create another function, um, but you have to keep in mind that aesthetics is data masking. Uh, let me, I should have looked this up before too. Let's see, yeah. I just want to read that difficult to do. Okay. 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 I'll probably go look it up later. But yeah, I was looking to see if it will tell you. Um, the data masking. Maybe not directly in here, but I'll tell you. So basically, if we're looking up the um look up the document documentation of AES, it should tell us that it's um data masking. Uh, yeah, it's data masking, and so that any variables inside it will need to embrace them. So here we create, um, so the code that was used to make these, we can create a function out of it. And it's gonna, this is gonna be a data frame function. So we have our data frame, our data frame df, our, our argument, the var, and then bin width, which we're gonna be equal to null at the moment. So, and yeah, so we create, it's basically that same code from before that you can't see. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, but it creates the histogram. So basically we created this histogram function that creates um, a histogram with the diamond data frame and we're taking carrots and we're bidding it um, in bins of width 0 0.01. So this should be the same as this plot. And then note that because histogram returns um, a GG plot, to, a GG top plot to plot, meaning you can still add on additional components if you want. Just remember to switch from the pipe to the plus. And I will show you that code. Yeah, so that's here. It should have been eval. Oh. But yeah, so we have that same, so this same code before we can add, we added labels to it. So let me fix. Of course, I didn't library tailors. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, so yeah, so we have that plot and then again, we can add labels to it. 
um, yeah, because it's a G um a G plot, we can use the plus sign to add more um to add the labels to it. So we added our X label size and carrots, and then our Y label number of diamonds. Okay, let me go back to this one. Okay adding more variables to plot functions. And then, so here in the next one, we want a easy way to eyeball whether or not a data set is linear by overlaying a smooth line and a straight line. So we have a function we're calling linearity check and the inputs are the data frame, the X variable and the Y variable or argument or yeah. And then, so we have our data frame, it's, um, we're creating a ggplot with aesthetics x and y, and then we're doing geom points. So we're going to make a scatter scatter plot, and then we're going to do two smoothers. So the first one is a lows, so, and then the second one is a LM or linear model. So the lows is going to be in the red, and linear is going to be in the blue. So we're taking, here we're gonna take our Star Wars data frame and we're gonna filter it by mass less than 1000. And then we're gonna do a linearity check of mass, um, mass, which is our X value and our height, which is our Y value. And looking at the lows, we say, does not look like the data's or outputs like very linear. Okay. And then combining with other tidyverse variables, um, tidyverse functions, I guess. So we can combine a dash of data manipulation with ggplot2 as seen below. Um, but you'll notice we have to use a new operator here. This is called the walrus. Um, because we're generating the variable name used on user supplied data. And variable names go on the left hand side of the equal sign, but our syntax doesn't allow anything to the left of the equal sign except for a single literal name. So here, okay. So we're going to create um, a function called sorted bars. Um, it's a data frame function. You see we have the data frame and then our input variable. Um, so we're taking the data frame and we're piping it um, to mutate, uh, oh yeah, we're doing, um, I forgot we're doing, so this is some data manipulation at the first step. So we're mutating the variable and then we're making a fact, reverse factor, da, 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 da basically like a frequency bar, I'm probably doing it wrong, bar graph. Um, but yeah, so then we have our aesthetics, um, which is gonna be y is equal to our set. So we're putting our bars on the y axis. And then here we're gonna, so here using our function, we take the diamonds data set and we're pipe, we're piping it into our function sorted bars. Um, we're going to be looking at the clarity, um, the variable clarity. Okay. So then labeling. So below we're going to see that we label the output with the variable and the bin. So we have that previous histogram that we made, um, the one with carrots. And here we're going to um, use, label it with the variable name and the bin width that was used. And we're going to be using the um, in glue um, function from the rlang package. package. Um, and it goes under the covers of the tidy evaluation. So rlang is a low level package that's used by just about every other package in the tidyverse because it implements tidy evaluation uh, as well as many other useful tools. 
pixels and in glue works similarly to string glue. So any value wrapped in the brackets will be inserted into the string. So yeah, so we're taking that histogram. We're taking that, we're creating our function histogram. And again, it's a, gonna be a function of a data frame, um, variable and bin width. And we're creating our label using the inglu function from the rlang package. And the label is going to be a histogram of whatever the input variable is with bin width, whatever the bin width is. So our variable, um, yeah. So again, we have that same, well, we have mostly the same um, code, but now we're going to add um, a label, a title to it. And then this is what we get. So again, it tells us a histogram of caret because caret is our variable or is our bar. And then with bin width, which just uses bin width, which is 0 0.1. Okay, so this is my, okay, one of the last slides. So style, making your functions readable. So you wanna be consistent in your naming and coding of functions. Um, the names, function should be verbs, like action, state, or occurrence. An argument should be nouns, people, places, or things. You wanna be consistent in whether you're using snake case or camel case. And for sets of functions, use a common prefix um, and don't overwrite existing functions. And then comments, you want to use comments to ex explain the why of the code and use lines of dashes or equals to break up code into sections. So in summary, in this chapter, we learned how to write functions for three useful scenarios, creating a vector, um, creating a data frame, or creating a plot. And to learn more about programming with tidy evaluation, you can see useful recipes in programming with dplyr and programming with tidyr, and learn and more about the theory in what is data masking and why do I need. Um, and then to learn more about reducing duplication in ggplot2 code, read the programming with ggplot2 chapter of the ggplot2 book. And then for more advice on function style, see the tidyverse style guide. And that is it for this chapter. Those, okay, well actually I could have kept it on the slide. Does anyone have any questions? You want me to go back through anything? If not, oh, Ken? Oh no! I was just saying that it was it was good though. I don't I don't have any questions, but I think it's really interesting.